What's up, guys? Tobin here with you. Thanks for checking us on out. You're beautiful, and I do mean that. Uh, if you guys like the Tobin and Leroy radio program, you guys can check us out on YouTube every single day. Uh, I'll put some clips up there. If you guys want to watch the whole show, twitch.tv slash 7 ticket. Although I do believe we will be streaming live YouTube very, very soon as well. So I'm excited about that as the powers of beer trying to make that happen over at 7 I ticket. Shouldn't be too big a deal, but hopefully uh, that is done soon, and I'm looking forward to that. Want to get to this, so... Uh, exciting stuff this weekend for the Heat fan. You know, let's stop being down in the dumps about, uh, you know, so-called orcas that we never wanted anyway, all right? Hey, I never wanted you anyway. You guys see Max Struess this weekend, dude? Woo! <laughs> Max Struess. Wow. Wowie wow. This dude. What? Well, look, first of all, shout out to that uh, ball, ball hype, ball is hype, balls to the wall hype. Whatever the hell you call that website, oh my god, that the 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 amount of snorting of that video I wanted to do, of the windmill jam from Max Drews, it was very very exciting. I, I enjoy this very much, and I think goes into a pretty interesting storyline going into this training camp, which we are about about a month away. Usually, uh, media day is the end of September, and then training camp gets going. So. Everybody's kind of getting their last licks in, their last rests in. You got Jimmy Butler out there working out. He's out of, uh, you know, the Colombian forest with his big face coffee beans, which I was thinking about this the other day. Like Jimmy Butler feels like he's on his path to making more with coffee than he is with basketball because for whatever, uh, this, 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 this big face coffee is just taken off and looks next level. And I'm just like, this dude's going to sell his coffee like for a gazillion dollars and it's going to be it's going to be an awesome day for him and everybody's going to be so crazy cuz he has you know dreads that weren't there earlier in the month but who cares i want him to play with the dreads by the way i'm with Jake Paul and Tyler Hero i think that that needs to be a thing i think Jimmy Butler needs to come back with a vengeance and just annoy everybody because of his luxurious hair let me ask you this why can't Jimmy Butler play with fake hair but Tom Brady can anybody ever ask of that anybody ever think of that it's a weird thing is it not Jimmy Butler should be allowed to do what he wants to do. That's neither here nor there. The Max Struess video, the reason I'm excited about this, is it sets up for an interesting storyline going into camp. You know, I have been of the opinion that Tyler Hero should come into this season as the projected starter. I know Pat Riley has said he has to earn the job, come on in here and earn it. He welcomed him in like, like Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Come on in and earn it. Is that what Mr. Rogers did, or is that Price is Right? The point is, whether he be Bob Barker or whether he be Mr. Rogers, the invite was open from Pat Riley. And I am of the opinion that Tyler Hero should start. I think that he did the bench thing to the best of his ability last year. He won sixth man of the year. And I think that that in itself should show, okay, it's kind of time to move on to the next phase of his career here. He's 22, going to be 23. And if the Heat are going to go anywhere, and this was a big debate, just had a whole video where I was ranting on uh, Termite and Lil Willie, I think that the big part of that is going to be leash from Tyler Hero. And you're going to need him in the postseason. I think the biggest uh, disappointment of the Heat's run was that he didn't get those electric moments from Tyler Hero. And so seeing that improvement is key and seeing the strength that he's going to build up is going to be very key. We'll get into that in just a second, but also I think it's important for him to know how to handle himself from starting the game to end of the game. However, this is an interesting conundrum the Heat are going into because you have a situation with three guys who essentially could have claim to this spot. I guess technically four if we're going to add Duncan Robinson to this second backcourt spot, if you will. I don't like to put things in positions because Spo doesn't. It's like this whole thing with power forward. Everything's like, oh, the Heat don't have a four, the Heat don't have a four, the Heat don't have a four. Dude, Eric Exposure doesn't work in this whole one, two, three, four thing. Just say they don't have the big who's playing next to Bam. That's essentially what you should go with, or the projected big that's going to be sitting next to Bam. But this whole, like, oh, they don't have a four, they don't have a two, they don't have a one. Dude, Eric Exposure would look at you cross-eyed if you're like, oh, position, Spo, let's talk about traditional basketball. That ain't how he rolls. Now, look, in some cases... He's going to have to not be able to, he's not going to be able to do that. Like playing the whole six starter thing with, with Tyler Hero. I don't think Tyler Hero is going to go for that. Now, what does that mean? Is Tyler Hero going to, you know, pull a Ben Simmons? No, but you know, 
disgruntled. Whatever that means these days. It feels like everybody's disgruntled in the NBA. But to me, um, I don't know if that's settled yet. Everybody has kind of projected that it's going to be Kayla Martin starting next to Bam. Maybe they do go with an Omer Yurtsevin, and Bam is technically your four in that spot. That's technically what it was with the team that went to the NBA Finals in 2020. The regular season team was a starting group of Kendrick Nunn with Duncan Robinson, Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Myers Leonard. Myers Leonard is a center. He's not a power forward. And so technically, Bam was the four there for everybody who wants to get a little bit wacky with it, but it never ended that way, did it? So I think that that stuff is still unanswered with not a lot of obvious options there. Maybe they trade for somebody. Maybe they trade for a a center who can stretch the floor. Maybe we're going to see Bam stretch the floor a little bit more. Lord knows he has been shooting a ton of threes with Kyle Lowry and in London. And Bam, I just want to see it for God's sakes. I really just want to see the guy uh, start stretching the floor. But let's just talk about this starting backcourt spot, right? Next to Kyle Lowry. So... The interesting thing is you have Tyler Hero, who's up for an extension. Don't know when that news is going to come out. You have Max Struess, who's essentially in a contract year. This is going to be his last year on a minimum. And then he's going to make oodles of money. And then you have Victor Oladipo, who has a one-and-one. Make like $9 million this year. But he has said he's one of the best players on the planet. You know that his next goal is to play really good this year and and then to go get the max. So you have, and then Duncan Robinson has made his money, but he was the starter, and has been the starter in that spot for most of his Heat career since Jimmy Butler got here. So it's interesting. I don't know what to make of Duncan Robinson. I feel like he's probably been the least talked about guy on the team, which is kind of weird for a guy who makes $90 million. And went on his podcast and basically said that he feels the Heat are an easier team to defend without him. So, you know, is he going to throw himself a fit? That's not Duncan Robinson's style, but made it clear, wasn't happy with the benching. Why would he be? And that the team was a a lot easier to figure out without him. So you have Duncan Robinson in one corner. In this corner, you got Duncan Robinson. In the other corner, you got Victor Oladipo. Victor Oladipo is sitting here, who has got like the goosiest of goosies when it comes to His Instagram, his comeback, the revenge tour. He's like quoting the Bible. It's getting a holy up in this mother bleeper when it comes to what he's planning to do with this season. This guy has reached the peak of credentials out of any of these guys, more than Tyler Hero, more than Max Struess, more than Duncan Robinson, Victor Oladipo, all-star, all-NBA defender, all-NBA player. This is the ceiling for this guy, but he is still on the mend from a catastrophic uh, injury that had a botched surgery and we have not seen that guy in a very long time now defensively out of these three it's not even close not even close this man is once the league leader in steals he is a terror he is a pterodactyl he is an absolute nightmare to go after on offense but his offense has looked a little bit Rusty has not been all the way back. Now, he did show a really, really good ability to get to the line in the flashes that we saw him. Now, mind you, Victor Oladipo was only playing these 15-minute chunks outside of, like, these games. He was playing these 15-minute chunks. Then he took them out of the rotation when they had the whole fight thing. That's where the Skip Bayless uh, rumor mill started that Jimmy Butler said, I will not play with Victor Oladipo on the floor. Um, And then it turns into he has these crazy flash games where he's basically the showcase guy, and he lights it up. And he does have some very, very important moments in the playoffs. And they essentially, with all the bodies falling by the wayside, can't take him off the floor. He basically plays his way into the rotation with the injuries that happened to Kyle Lowry and Tyler Hero. He, you know, becomes one of the reliable pieces for the Miami Heat. And this is with, you know, going from you're not playing over 15 minutes. So people may look at that and they say, oh, well, we don't know if this guy can get back to who he was. I don't know, man. To me, that's impressive to do that, basically, with no training. This is all rehab, trying to get yourself back. To me, that speaks to the character of the guy. Then in this corner, you got the Struce. Juice. Loose. Over here, Max Struce is the guy who was inserted into that spot. And with him, they were very successful. Very successful. We know he has a very good relationship with Jimmy Butler. We know that 
this was the first chance he's really gotten to kind of spread his wings and do more than just be a shooter. Um, he's looking lean as hell in these videos. I mean, I, I don't know if you guys are like looking. I was like, damn, everybody's in good shape, Sizen. You know, let's be honest about it. Everybody's in good shape, Sizen. Who, who has a day? Omer Yurtsevin, Omer No Shurtsevin. You've had, uh, you know, you've had Victor Oladipo Revenge Tour. You've had uh, even uh, Duncan Robinson. I've seen like battle rope videos. He looks fantastic. Um, Jimmy Butler, come on. You know, Bam on a bio shooting threes. Everybody's having a Kyle Lowry in a sweatsuit. Who's not having an exciting offseason for the Miami Heat? I mean, I'm serious. Everybody is. But Max Struess, you know, in a lot of ways, this is an undrafted guy. Same story as Duncan Robinson has more on the line than any of these guys because he's heading into this contract. Here's a guy who's had knee injuries in the past. Huge stakes for a guy like Max Struess. But I do feel like, in my opinion, this is the most chameleon-like player that he can have because he is not shy. If you put him on the bench, he will come out with the green light he will shoot. If you put him from starting, he will shoot. He is not a guy who is shy to fit in. He does not need as much of a fit. He doesn't need the touch. The touch is that a Victor Oladipo does. When the touches you give him, he will make it happen. He is not bashful and showed himself to be a pretty capable defender, especially in transition at times last year. Uh, and in the playoffs, I thought we saw a very, very improved guy. Dude's a dog. He's a dog, dude. And then finally, in the main event, we have maybe the most polarizing player on the Miami Heat. And in a lot of ways, the most popular. I think the guy who maybe gets the biggest pop out of that arena, at least up until Jimmy Butler had that game six. I think that put him in an upper echelon in Heat lore with fans. But for the longest time, Tyler Hero was getting the loudest pops in that arena. He's got a big time contract extension coming his way sometime soon, you would think. Yet, he is in every trade rumor. So he is not in that untouchable realm that Bam Adebayo is where we say, the team absolutely believes in everything this kid is and will be. There's clearly a level of they have snooped around a little bit that there's more to come. But how do you know what that more level can be unless you go to him more? That's the interesting thing. And I think to me, it's most important to figure out his future and what it's going to be with him than anybody else, at least to start off the season, you know. Much like it was the year after the when they went to the finals. They tried to start him. It was too much for him. Overwhelming. Did not have the, the offseason to get better. He did not have the improvement. It was overwhelming. It was drowning him. Now, with an offseason where he is looking swole as hell again, looking good in the offseason. I see the pickleball photos. Okay? I see the photos with uh, with him with the, with the headband on. Headband Tyler doing his thing. The interesting question here is, where do they go? Is this going to be a true camp competition? Is this something that really will be settled in the midst of training camp between Duncan Robinson, Victor Oladipo, Max Struess, and Tyler Hero? I think it's uh, it's it's going to be a hell of a thing to check out as we go into this thing. If I had to handicap it, I'd go Tyler's the 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 the, the favorite in the odds. Then I go Struess status quo. Then I go Vic, and then I go Duncan Robinson. But I think it. Uh, I, th I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that those guys who are behind the rankings could leapfrog. That definitely could happen. It's going to be an interesting thing to check out.